Welcome to the Treasury of Solomon, where we go verse by verse through the book of Proverbs to find the wisdom that God has for us. Today's verse is Proverbs 2.11. It says, Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. This verse is telling us some of the benefits of having God and His wisdom dwelling within our heart and having the knowledge of God being pleasant unto our soul from the last verse. The first one of these, which we find in the first half, is that discretion shall preserve us. What exactly is discretion, though? In the Hebrew, it means purpose or device. It also has to do with sagacity. Sagacity basically means that we have good discernment and good judgment. The part of this definition that we need to first look at is purpose. This is what we're all looking for in life. We're all searching for and hunting, trying to figure out what our purpose is, what God's will for our life is, what we're meant to do with the few short years that we have on this earth. The way that we find that purpose is through knowing God's word, because his word is his written will. When we then apply the word in our life, using the personality and the talents that he gave us, we'll be doing his will. It will become more clear. We'll have more understanding about what specifically we should do. He made us each different. He gave us all different abilities, and he did that for a reason. He gives them to us and makes them known to us so that we can use them for his honor and his glory. When we begin to tap into our God-given purpose and the potential that comes with that, it's the purpose itself that preserves us. Our purpose has a unique capacity to make us focus on what's ahead of us. It helps to direct our passion, our energy, and our attention on what God is calling us to do. When we understand that this is something that's unique to us, something that we specifically are called to be doing, it's not often that the importance is lost in us. We see it for what it is, as a mission handed down to us by the decree of God. Just like horses wear blinders when they race so that they won't get distracted, our purpose works the same way. It blinds us to many of the distractions of the enemy. That doesn't mean that we'll be completely immune. We never will be. But it does mean that we'll avoid more of them than we would have had had we not endeavored to find and accomplish our purpose. When we don't have a purpose, we're lost, we're still searching, we're spiritually wandering around, and we're very susceptible at that point to falling prey to many of the devices of the enemy, because we're still struggling to discern the foundational principles of our life. You're grasping for straws at that point. You don't know where to start, and we run the risk at that point of coming to think that anywhere is a good place to start, even though that couldn't be further from the truth. The Holy Spirit will show us where to start. And that's why he gives us the sagacity, the discernment, and the judgment to choose wisely and to act accordingly when figuring out our purpose. The other part of this first half that we need to look at is the phrase preserve thee. That's important. In the Hebrew, it means to keep watch, to guard. The concordance goes further to say that it means to be circumspect, to take heed to self, to mark, to look narrowly, to observe, to hedge about as with forms. Just like he did with Job. The Lord puts a hedge of protection round about every believer. He also has his angels camping round about us. They're all there to not only minister unto us, but to also guard and protect us from the wiles and the attacks of the enemy. The better we know our purpose, the more detailed we are in going about accomplishing it, the more circumspect and comprehensive our protection will be. Not because that earns us better protection from God or anything like that, but because we have a clear and a better idea of where we're headed and what specifically we need to do, and that'll make us far less susceptible to falling for the lies of the enemy that try to tell us otherwise. We won't be let out the road so quickly if we know and we're sure that we're on the right one. The second half of the verse said, Understanding shall keep thee. What do we mean by understanding? Is that just merely the faculty of comprehension of knowledge, or is it more than that? The Hebrew shows us that there's more to the story. It means fruit, gain, increase, revenue. That's not what we usually think of when we first hear the word understanding. But what this shows us is that when we've comprehended knowledge, especially the personal first-hand experiential knowledge of God that we were talking about last week, it leads to something. It doesn't end in and of itself. Things never end in themselves when they're of God. Because they always produce fruit. They always go on to be more of a blessing. They always bring us up higher. They always lead us to better. Because that's God's will for his children. Our understanding bears fruit. It produces something. And one of those fruits is the fact that it keeps us. The definition of keep thee is very similar to that of preserve thee. So we know that we're dealing with nearly the same thing here. It's the fact that he guards us and watches over us. 
our understanding of the ways of God, of his character, of his way of acting and operating in our lives also helps to protect us from needlessly falling prey to the obvious lies of the enemy. The better we know God, the better we know his word and his character, the more starkly the deceptions of the enemy stand out. It becomes harder and harder for the devil to deceive us. He has to go to greater and greater lengths, which really means that he has to go to more outrageous and more unrealistic lengths, which show that we're taking back the leverage and the power from him, which is the way that it always should be, because the power was given unto us, not to him. We have to keep it and hold on to it, refusing to give him any ground in our lives. The important thing to point out with the idea of keeping us and also even with preserving us is that these terms don't imply that we don't have to go through the battle. They don't imply that we'll be able to abstain from them or sit by the sidelines as they go on. It's the opposite. The battles and the attacks still come, but we're promised and we're guaranteed that we will make it through them and we'll come out the other side intact. We'll be better off because of them. We'll be wiser and stronger and more powerful. And we'll have more knowledge and understanding of the God who brought us through. God never leaves us to fend for ourselves in the battle. He's always right there by our side, holding us by the hand and leading us through the fiery trials that come our way. Deliverance isn't just a possibility. It's a promise. And our discretion and our understanding make that deliverance so much better and so much more comprehensive, which is why we need to make them central parts of our lives. Let's close in prayer. Lord, today we thank you for our discernment and for our understanding. Lord, we thank you that you help us to see the attacks of the enemy for what they are, that you make known to us his plans to come against us, and that you help us to be prepared and ready to not only come against him, but to overcome him. Lord, we thank you that you promise to deliver us, that you promise to keep us and preserve us. Lord, today we claim those promises in faith. And Lord, we thank you that as we go to do warfare against the enemy, that we will always prevail, that we'll take back ground for you and for your children, and that we'll make a difference in the world and in the lives of those around us. And Lord, today we thank you that you gave us a purpose, and that you make that purpose clear to us as we read and study your word. We thank you that you gave us a purpose that's perfectly in line with who we are, with our personality, with our abilities and our skills that you've given us. And Lord, we thank you that as we walk in that purpose, that we'll bear fruit and that that fruit will go on to honor and glorify your name. And Lord, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember before you leave to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and remember to like and comment below. The wisest thing we can ever do is give our lives to Christ and be born again. If you want to have Jesus as a part of your life today, all you need to do is invite him into your heart to be your personal Lord and Savior. Trust him that you're forgiven and choose to live for him who died for you. We'll see you next time as we continue to explore the treasury of Solomon and study the king's word together.